the Islamic concept perfectly matches with the concept of the Vedas. It may not match with the common Hindus who believe that Almighty God becomes a human being, but nowhere does the Veda have the concept that Almighty God has become a human being. It has a concept that Almighty God has sent rishis, has sent people who were close to Almighty God so that they could guide the humankind. And there are mentions of several rishis and messengers in the Vedas. Let us discuss what do the Hindu scriptures have to speak about the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's mentioned in the Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khan 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 10 to 27. It says that the Malichas have spoiled the land of the Arabs. Arya Dharm is not to be found there. There was an enemy who I defeated earlier, but now he has been sent by a more powerful enemy. I will send a man by the name of Muhammad, peace be upon him, who will destroy these enemies and will guide the people to the true path. O Raja Bhoj, you need not go to the land of the Pishachas, for I, through my kindness, will purify you here itself. A man in the injury disposition, he appears in front of Raja and says, O Raja, I have been sent by Ishwar Paramatma. Arya Dharm will prevail. The religion of truth, Din al Haq, will prevail in the world. I have been sent by Ishwar Paramatma to enforce a creed of meat eaters. My follower shall be a person who is circumcised, who does not have a shandy on his head, who has created a revolution who keeps a beard, who gives the call for prayer, who eats all lawful things but will not have the flesh of swine. He will not be purified by herbs and shrubs, but will be purified by warfare. He will be called a Musalman. He will be a meat eater. Now this prophecy about a rishi to come, the name of the rishi is mentioned as Muhammad. Peace be upon him. And it says that he will guide the people on the straight path. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam guided the Arabs. It was known as Yom al-Jahiliya, the days of ignorance. He guided them to light. And it says that his follower will be a person who circumcised. And the Muslims are circumcised. He will not have a shindi, will not have a tail on the head. And we Muslims don't have. Who will grow a beard? We Muslims grow a beard. Will create a revolution. Will give the call for prayer, that is the Adhan. And we Muslims, we give the Adhan, that the call for prayers. They will eat all lawful things, but will not touch the flesh of swine. And we Muslims, we don't eat pork. They will not be purified by herbs and shrubs, but will be purified by warfare. And we have been told in the Quran that we have to fight for the truth against Aryan oppression. They will be called Musalman. They will be meat eaters. This prophecy in Bhavishya Purana clearly specifies about the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad and his followers as Muslims have been described. He has been prophesied in several places. Time will not permit. I'll just give a reference to a few of the Bhavishya Purana. He's also prophesied in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khand 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8. He's even prophesied in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khand 1, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 21 to 23. The last and final messenger has also been prophesied in the Atharva Ved, in book number 20, hymn number 127, mantra number 1 to 14. These are called as kuntup suktas. Kuntup in Sanskrit means the hidden gland in the abdomen, indicating that the meaning of these verses, the hidden, they'll be known later. And time will not permit to discuss all the 14 mantras. We'll just discuss the salient feature, the first four mantras. Mantra number one says, he is Narashansa. He is Kaurama, who will defeat 60,090 enemies. Mantra number two says, he is a camel riding rishi. Mantra number three says, he is Mama Rishi. Mantra number four says, he is Vashvesh Reb. The first mantra says, he is Narashansa. Narashansa is derived from Nar, which means a man or a person. And Shansa, as we know, Prashansa means praise. So Narashansa means one who is praiseworthy. And if you translate the name of the last and final messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, into English, if you translate Muhammad into English, وسلم, it means the praiseworthy. So Narashansa is the exact translation 
of the Arabic name Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's mentioned my name. <laughs> Further, it says that he is Kaurama. One of the meaning of Kaurama in Sanskrit is Prince of Peace. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the Prince of Peace. The other meaning is an immigrant. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated from Makkah to Medina. He was an immigrant. First mantra also says he will defeat 60,090 enemies. An approximate population of the people of Makkah who were against Prophet Muhammad was approximately 60,000. <laughs> Mantra number two says, he will be a camel riding rishi. No Indian rishi, no Brahman will ever ride a camel. Because according to Manusmriti, chapter number 11, verse number 202, it says, a Brahman is forbidden to ride a donkey or a camel. So this indicates it cannot be an Indian Rishi. Mantra number three says, he is Mama Rishi. Mama comes from Maha, meaning great Rishi. And some of the other scriptures also say, he is Muhammad Rishi. Mantra number four says, he is Reb. Reb means one who praises. And the other name of Muhammad Sallallahu was Ahmad Sallallahu which if you translate into English, it means the one who praises. So even his other name, that is Ahmad, translated into Sanskrit, Reb, is mentioned in the Atharva Ved. So these mantras, kuntub suktas, they clearly specify no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I will just mention a few other prophecies, there are several. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has even been prophesied in Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, verse number 6. It says that Akaru, he will defeat 10,000 enemies without a fight. It is talking about Battle of Azab, the Battle of Khandaq, chapter number 33 in the Quran. And Karu, in Sanskrit, means the one who prays, which is another translation of the second name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahmad, the one who praises. It says this person, one who praises, that is Ahmad, he will defeat 10,000 enemies without a fight. And we know in the Battle of Khandaq, the enemy is approximately 10,000 in number, and the battle was won without a fight taking place. He's also prophesied in Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, verse number 7. It says that the Abandu, he will defeat 60,090 enemies and the 20 chiefs. Abandu, in Sanskrit again, means one who praises. That is the translation of the name Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It also says that he'll be an orphan. And we know today from history that there were approximately 20 chiefs of Makkah which were defeated by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the population of Makkah against the Prophet was approximately 60,000. This prophecy is also repeated in Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 53, verse number nine, but the Sanskrit word is Sushrama. Sushrama in the Sanskrit dictionary, again, it means one who praises, which is the translation of the name Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are various prophecies, time will not permit us to go into the detail. He's also prophesied in the Psalm Ved, in Uttar Chik, mantra number 1500, it says that Ahmad has been given the eternal law. He is mentioned by name also as Ahmad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He has been given the eternal law, that is the glorious Quran, that is the Sharia. But if you read the translation of this verse, because Ahmad is an Arabic word, they could not translate it, so they thought it was Ahmati. And Ah and Mati in Sanskrit means my father. So it says, my father has given me eternal law. So the translation, if you read it, differs. But the original script mentions the word Ahmad. And the word Ahmad is even mentioned in other places in the Hindu scriptures, including Psalm Ved, Indra, chapter number 2, Mantra 152. He is even mentioned as Ahmad in Yajur Ved, chapter number 31, verse number 18. In Rig Ved, book number 8, hymn number 6, verse number 10. He is also prophesied by name Ahmad in Atharva Ved, book number 8, hymn number 5, verse number 16, as well as Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 126, mantra number 14. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, besides being mentioned as Ahmad, one of his names, he is also mentioned as Narashan Shah in several places in the Hindu scriptures. And as I mentioned earlier, that Nara Shansa is derived from Nar, which means a man, a person, and Shansa, which means Prashansa, praiseworthy. So Nara Shansa means 
a person who's praiseworthy. That is exact translation of the name of the last and final messenger Muhammad into English. He is mentioned by Narashansa several places in the Hindu scriptures in Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 13, verse number three, Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 18, verse number nine, Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 106, verse number four, Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 142, verse number three, Rig Ved, book number two, hymn number three, verse number two, Rig Ved, book number five, hymn number five, verse number two. Rig Ved, book number seven, hymn number two, verse number two, Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 64, verse number three, Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 182, verse number two, Yajur Ved, chapter number 21, verse number 31, Yajur Ved, chapter number 21, verse number 55, Yajur Ved, chapter number 20, verse number 37, Yajur Ved, chapter number 20, verse number 57, Yajur Ved, chapter number 28, verse number two, Yajur Ved, chapter number 28, verse number 19, Yajur Ved, chapter number 28, verse number 42. You can keep on quoting only the references where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been mentioned by name as Narashansa in several places in the Hindu scriptures. You can give a talk for days together only on prophecies of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hindu scriptures. I will just mention one more last prophecy about the Kalki Avatar. And he has been prophesied as Kalki Avatar in the Bhagavad Purana. 12, Adhe 2, Shlokas 18 to 20, it says that he will be born in the house of Vishnu Yas, a noble souled Brahmin who is the chief of the village of Sambhala. And he will be called as the Kalki. Mantra number 19 and 20 says that he will be the supreme lord of the worlds. He will be given supernal knowledge and character and will be given eight special characteristics, eight special qualities. He will be given a steed, a horse by the angels, and he will ride a horse carrying a sword in his hand. And he will defeat the enemies and will be helped by the angels. He further prophesies in Bhagavad Purana, Khandu 1, Adhay 3, Shlokas 25, that he'll be born in the Kalyug. This Kalki Avatar will be born in Kalyug, in which the kings will behave like robbers. And he'll be born in the house of Vishnu Yas, and will be called as Kalki. Same Kalki Avatar is even mentioned in the Kalki Purana, in chapter number 2, verse number 4, which says that he will be born in the house of Vishnu Yas. Kalki Purana, chapter number two, verse number five says, he will be helped by four companions in spreading his religion. Kalki Purana, chapter number two, verse number seven, it says that he'll be helped by the angels in the battlefield. Kalki Purana, chapter number two, verse number 11 says that he'll be born in the house of Vishnu, yes, in the womb of Sumati. And Kalki Purana, chapter number two, verse number 15 says, he'll be born in the first half of Madhav month. You can only give a talk on Kalki Avatar. I'll just mention the points in brief. That these prophecies, what do they say? Point number one, that it says that the name of Kalki's father will be Vishnu Yas. Vishnu Yas, if you translate, means the worshipper of Vishnu, worshipper of God. And the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's father was Abdullah, which also means worshipper of Allah, worshipper of God. Point number two, the name of the mother of Kalki Avatar will be Sumati. Sumati, if you translate into English, it means peace. And the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi mother was Amina, which if you translate into English means peace. <laughs> Further says that he will be born in the village by the name of Sambhala. Sambhala, if you translate, means a place of serenity and peace. And similarly, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was born in Makkah. It was known as the Darul Aman, the place of peace and serenity. So it is also mentioned that he'll be born in Makkah. It further says he'll be born in the house of the chief of Sambala, house of the chief of Makkah, which we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born, that he was born in the house of the chief of Makkah, born in the Quraysh family. It further says that he will be born 
on the 12th day of the first half of the month of Madhav. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in the first half of the lunar month of Rabbi Awal on the 12th day. This prophecy that he was born on the 12th day of Madhav is the same as 12th day of Rabbi Awal. Further it says that this Kalki Autar, he will be a final messenger. Exactly what's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 40, where it says, Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadim mirjalikum, wala khi Rasulullah, wa khatamun nabin, wa kana Allah bi kulli shayin alima. Which means that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the father of any of you men, but is the messenger of Allah, and he is the seal of the prophets, the final messenger. Allah is all knowing, full of knowledge. Further, it says that this Kalki Autar, he will get knowledge from Parsuram, the Almighty God, in a mountain. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first revelation he got in Gare Hira, Jabal Nur, the Mount of Nur, in Gare Hira. And the prophecy further says that he will go towards north and come back. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated from Makkah northwards toward Medina, and he came back to Makkah victoriously. Further, it says that this Kalki Autar, he will be an example to the whole world. He'll have an impeccable character, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Kalam, chapter number 68, verse number 4, that verily thou art standeth on the highest standard of character. It's further mentioned he'll be given eight special qualities. And in Kalki Purana and Bhagavad Purana, the eight qualities mentioned is wisdom, self-control, respectable lineage, revealed knowledge, valor, charity, gratefulness, and measured speech. And the Prophet Muhammad was known for all these eight qualities. Furthermore, it's mentioned he will be a teacher of the world, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Sabah, chapter 34, verse number 28, Illa kafatal linas, bashira wa nazira, that we have sent thee not but as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning them against sin. But most of the human beings they do not know. It further says that this Kalki Autar, he'll be given a steed by Almighty God. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given the Burakh, by which he did the Miraj, that the ascension to the heavens. It further says, this Kalki Autar will ride a horse and will carry a sword. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he took part in most of the battles, most of them which are fought in self-defense. And even though he was a leader, he physically took part, he rode the horse, and he even caught the sword in the right hand. Further, the prophecy says that he'll be helped by four companions to spread the religion, the deen. And we know it refers to the four Khalifas, the Khulfa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with them all, who later became the Khulf Rashidin, the rightly guided Khalifas of Islam, who spread the religion further. It also says that this Kalki Autar will defeat the enemy and guide the people to the right track. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam defeated the enemies, and he guided the Arabs from Yom al Jahiliya, the age of ignorance, he guided them to the true path. And the final point mentioned is that he will be helped by the angels in the battlefield. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was helped by angels in several battles, including the Battle of Badr, which is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse 123 to 125, as well as Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 8 and 9. So this prophecy of Kalki Autar, the last and final messenger, befits no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him.